Hey guys, today we're going to be shooting with 10 different cameras, one from each decade of the last 100 years. Come and step into my time machine. Today's photo duel is going to be a big challenge. We're going to take a camera from each decade from the last 100 years and that's how we're going to do our photo duel. Yeah, it's going to be a real big challenge because we're not even sure if all of these cameras work perfectly. We haven't had time to test them, so it'll be, it'll be interesting. And while a lot of these cameras are ours, um, we couldn't have done this without the help of KEH to fill in the blanks of the, the decades that we don't have cameras for. So again, huge thanks to KEH for their continual support. If you don't know who they are, you should. They're an excellent place to go for vintage gear like the ones we're shooting with today, or even modern gear, modern used gear, or even a great place to go sell your own gear. So check them out at keh.com. Like all photo duels, this is a friendly competition to see who's the best photographer, <laughs> who gets the best photo. So vote for your favorite photo or photos. And at the end, like always, we'll show you who won last episode. We're gonna be using video lighting in the shoot, not strobes, because we didn't wanna deal with potential problems on top of all the other potential problems we're giving ourselves with flash sync speeds and exposure and all of that. So what you see is what you get. Video lighting, it's gonna be great. And for subjects, we've got our kids. You wanna tell them about that since you were the costume designer? <laughs> costume designer, I don't know if I wanna claim that. <laughs> they were kinda of last minute Amazon and what we had around the house. Yeah. But um, our kids were very willing for a prize. Yeah, we bribed them with <laughs> bubblegum and Pokemon cards. <laughs> <laughs> in case any of the photos don't turn out, we're gonna take everything back up on a digital X-T3. So we'll have that as backup if we need it. And we'll try to mimic the, I guess the, the film look of that decade that didn't work out. I know one of these, maybe even more than one, <laughs> are probably not gonna work out. <laughs> um, so that'll be our backup. And the camera we're gonna start with is this beauty. This is the Kodak Vest Pocket, which would accompany someone in the 1920s if they were going to war or doing some photojournalism. Um, this was given to me by today's folks last Christmas. And I've been told that it's in working order. So we're gonna find out today, who knows <laughs> what we're gonna get. I should have done the pose like this. Does this look like a good pose? Yeah, I like that pose. Hold it up by your eye. Right there. Yeah, hold it there. <laughs> so that's gonna be about uh, three feet. Three and a half feet. Oh, three and a half feet is too close. Six feet is as close as we can get. So scoot back a little bit, Lucy. Right there. And hold this. By your eye. Okay, and we're gonna have to be like right back here. With these old school cameras, I kind of just feel like it'll be just amazing if we get shots that turn out, let alone, you know, aesthetically pleasing. TLRs were invented in the 1930s, so we have a Roloflex TLR and it is loaded with ultra fine Extreme 100. Ah, she blinked again. Sorry! Next up from the 1940s, I think 1948 or 9, 
the Polaroid was invented by what's his name Land. His last name was Land, so these are all Land cameras. Polaroid cameras. This is the 95B. So since they don't make film for this guy anymore, we have loaded this up with uh, one sheet of 4x5 film and we'll expose that and then switch it out. So we both only get one shot because it takes about 10 minutes to load a 4x5 in here in a darkroom bag. So we get one shot. We'll see how it turns out. It was not overly surprising to find out that these photos did not turn out. Still pretty cool, but way underexposed. So instead, we'll have you vote on our X-T3 backup shots. And in the 1950s, the photography world was forever changed with the invention of the Leica M3, and it has the Voigtlander 50mm 1.2 lens on it. Next up, and from the 50s, we have the Nikormat FTN. The FTN was a great alternative, a lesser expensive um, option to the, the very iconic Nikon F. We couldn't get a Nikon F, that would've been cool. But this is no slouch. The FTN was a really great camera, and it is a brick. I like both of you, I want both of you too. Yeah, I'm to tie. Yeah. Now you feel like the whole world's picking on you. But deep down inside, you know it ain't true. You in punishment cause your mother wants to raise you in the right. In the 70s, we start to see more and more film cameras that have auto exposure, and this one is no exception. The very popular Pentax ME Super, ugh, super almost dropped it, um, has a great auto exposure, which we will utilize with our excellent video lighting. And it is equipped with the Helios 44 iconic Russian swirly lens, though you won't see any swirl in this one, sorry. In the 1980s, Minolta rocked the world with the Minolta Maxim 7000. This camera came equipped with the first reliable autofocus. For the 90s, we chose to shoot with the really remarkable Nikon N90S. However, we did not get good results with the Pro 400H zone we chose to shoot with. So instead, we'll be showing you the X-T3 backup photos with Mastin Labs Pro 400H film simulation. And coming at us straight from the year 2000, May to be exact, one of the very first digital cameras of the new millennium is the Canon EOS D30, um, which rocks an impressive 3.1 megapixels. This is a 
very JCPenney 2000s shoe right here. Got our Crocs on. Full of awkward posing. And the dogs come in. BB no no. And that brings us up to today, which we have the X-T3, but we're not gonna do an actual shoot with the X-T3 because this has been our backup the whole shoot. So for this one, we're just gonna pick, each of us will pick our favorite digital shot from the whole shoot, and we'll show that to you now. That's all, that's all we have for you. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Let's show you who won last episode. Come and step into my time machine.